Yeah, man. Hello, my name is Miguel, and today I'm gonna make for you chicken gizzards brown stew. All right, so this is one pound of chicken gizzards, a stalk of scallion, one onion and a half, one large size onion and a half, a spring of thyme. about well, six between eight garlic cloves piece of ginger first bend of your finger your index half of a scotch bonnet pepper or quarter teaspoon pimento berries quarter teaspoon um, rosemary about a teaspoon we're going to use oil for frying the oil a little bit of oil that's a pepper one tablespoon of dried parsley one tablespoon of dried basil you can use any of these herbs for fresh a teaspoon and a half of browning about a quarter teaspoon of jerk sauce seasoning that's optional a teaspoon of soy sauce and a tablespoon of sea salt salt any salt visit jamaicadinners.com for the recipe first I want to get these chicken gizzards cooking. So I'm going to prepare the chicken gizzards first. So I'm removing the film covering. This is chicken gizzards. It's imported. Usually it comes with, uh, they have to clean out that part right where you see I'm touching. is a yellow little thing that comes in it where all the food is stored. They clean it out properly. And sometimes there's, there's a lot of fat that's around the chicken's gizzard. They trim off a lot of the fat. So, but if you still see a little bit of fat on it. And in between the gizzards, chicken gizzards is still not so clean. I am going to show you how I would clean chicken gizzards properly. Alright, so first go through and trim off all fats. Just trim off any kind of fat that you might see on it. And that, that, that white part, you gotta clean it properly. Use a knife and scrape off where the, the food would be. I think the gizzard, the chicken, the chicken's gizzard is used to is aid in digesting the grain that they eat and roaches and all sort of stuff that chicken the chicken tends to eat. So it kind of break it down. Think. I'm not even sure what that's you guys tell me I need to be sure before I bring it up but I'm cooking I'm just briefly saying some things all right so you can put the chicken gizzard on a surface and scrape off the, the, the brownish looking brownish thing that you'll see on that white part I remember when I was a boy and we used to go to the country and they will kill the chicken, put the, old, the, the chicken's body under a bucket and then chop his head off. And then the chicken will just shake <laughs> under the bucket until he dies. Then they'll take the chicken and put it in, hang it. Or they can tie the chicken's right. and so continue. Let me show you this. This is the part where the, the grain goes, where the, the chicken stores the food that he eats in the, in the chicken gizzards gizzard all right so you gotta look on the gizzard and make sure it's clean because sometimes the, the stain is still on it and I consider it muck so anything that is not chicken gizzard you gotta clean it off because if you don't you're not gonna get a good eat 
so you have to spend the time and, and, and clean each single one properly and this is how you want to get it white and pretty and clean we're going to rinse it with white vinegar and water after we're finished prepping so get a not sharp knife because you know I don't use sharp knife that much or any at all so a, sh a dull knife would be good for something like this so grow through look on each piece look for grains and look for muck all right so another way that they kill chicken too is though they'll hang the chicken upside down tie his feet his feet you see a grain you see that grain this is a corn grain that's still in it so for those of you who don't like preparing or just wash you gotta clean off everything and they tie the chicken's feet and 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 then just chop his neck off just hold his neck his head and just cut his head off and then he just shake 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 and what blood be just splashing all over the place but usually it's in a, a country in a backyard yard all right so once they do that and, and the drain the chicken drain they dip the chicken in hot water and then just 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 rub the iron over and take off all that feather take off all the feather all right so this is what you want you want the gizzard to be clean we're gonna rinse it next with white vinegar and water all right so that's what they do and then once they they dip the chicken in hot water they they then prep it they start they cut off the foot first cut off the neck because that's separate all right so do what you see me doing drip about three tablespoons of white vinegar and water and then kind of rinse off each piece of the chicken gizzard each piece of the chicken gizzard each chicken gizzard piece just rinse it off all right I think what they do next is cut the the butt like where the butt is and split it up next to the stomach and take out all that take out the insides like to the butt and once they take out all the insides they save the gizzard they save the heart I think that's it I don't remember anything else but I know the gizzard when they cut it and they just they cut it and then fold it over you'll see all this this yellow food coming out and just pluck it out take out the, 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 the muck out of the gizzard and then just pile them up all right I'm not so sure what they do next but I know that the, the, the part that you see me cleaning off right now it's it's a yellow film film that that's on it with the food so you gotta peel it off use a knife and kind of peel it off like you would like you would a fish skin like you would chicken skin but it's, it's it don't come off as easy as chicken skin all right so do as you see me doing and hold each chicken gizzard piece use your fingers and rub it and make sure it's cleaned properly the more time you spend on this part look if I am a if I'm gonna show people what to do I'm gonna show you the ultimate the ultimate correct thing to do some people take shortcuts some people do all sort of different stuff but if I'm gonna influence others I have to show you the ultimate the correct thing it might not be what everybody is doing but I have to show you the ultimate the 100% some people might use less browning less seasoning see if I'm mixing a drink I'm gonna give you the, the, the exact sweetness and then some people can make it sweeter if they want or they can make it fresher if they want so my objective in doing this is to I'm happy the young miss or whosoever 
I'm gonna find out your name and put it up. Ask me to do this because I want people to have a good experience eating this chicken gizzard. It's an affordable meal. Cooking it takes a little bit long though, I must say. But it's it's it 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 has a unique flavor. I'm gonna do the curry, chicken gizzard, curry stew. So look for that too as well. So all right, so do as you see me doing. Go through each chicken gizzard piece and use your fingers. You tear off the fat if you see any with a little fat. Use your fingers and clean off any little brown spots that you might see. You want it to be clean and pretty in the end. Alright, so this is the idea. I spoke to you while I was cleaning it to kill time. Alright, so once you do that, rinse, give it a final rinse with fresh running water. Alright, so once you do that, it's finished. Don't I didn't squeeze it just now, I just I just I just get rid of the excess water. No, I'm just cleaning my area with some white vinegar. Next, cut each chicken gizzard in half. Because the gizzard is not that big. So it, you cut it in half in biteable chunks. Say about about half inch or so. I'm using a food scissors because it's easier to handle. About this size. You see, you see how the chicken gizzards are pretty and look clean? That's what you want. Alright, so look at this. This meat is a tough meat. It's, it's tough. When we were, when I was a child, my mom or dad would, would fry when they get these chicken gizzards in the in the chicken usually they wrap it up with a chicken neck chicken heart and put it in the chicken and liver and stuff like that um, and they put it in the chicken and then what our what my parents what my parents used to do is just um, They'll fry the little liver, fry the little heart, fry the gizzard, fry the neck, and then they'll give us that to eat, different from dinner, before dinner. And the chicken skin, so because my mom never used to cook with chicken skin, so she usually take it off and fry it and give us to eat. Alright, so you see me go through and cut each chicken gizzard piece in chunks now we're gonna start tenderizing so put to heat uh, this saucepan is a medium sized saucepan I had two cups of water I had two more cups so it's four cups in all starting with in all for this meal we're gonna use for one pound of chicken gizzard we're going to use six cups of water. All right, so now I'm peeling, I'm stripping off the skin off the piece of ginger. 
half inch piece of ginger do as you see me doing and just kind of well I'm out of frame but you get the idea let's kind of peel off the skin and add it to the water add peel two garlic cloves I had those as well all right so this is a medium-sized saucepan it's big enough to hold four cups of water the stove's gauge is on four medium low use the pans later cover it up cover it properly and allow you gotta watch it because it might overflow all right now while we wait while we waiting for our chicken desire to tenderize it's gonna take a good time I just wanted it to start so now I'm gonna start preparing the seasonings whenever doing a stew like this it's best and you're doing natural cooking it's best to add the seasonings twice so I'm having I'm adding I'm gonna add the seasoning twice so you have container add add container one and add container two peel the garlic ginger peel the ginger get off the skins get off the skin and cut ginger end cut off ginger ends cut off garlic ends oh you heard the phone my phone just wrong so I had to stop and go see who it is Cut off any kind of blushes or any brown spots, any spoilage that you might see on the garlic, trim that off. The scallion, remove all dying leaves. Yes, put half the garlic in one container and half in the other container. Remove all dying leaves from the scallion. Cut off ends, the root end and the tip. It's a spring of time. As for the onion, I just cut it in half. It's easier to handle. And then remove the brown leaf, which is the skin. Just remember now, the first layer of the onion is the strongest. So you just want to remove the brown leaf. I am not going to dice the onions yet because I don't know how long this thing gonna take a good while to cook maybe two two hours or so so I'm not gonna dice the onions yet because I don't want all that nutrient and fumes to escape so I'm just peeling it and if you if you if you don't if you cannot chop it yet that would be good too as well but with the onion the scallion not the onion, the scallion at the time, we're gonna rinse it. So rinse it off, make sure it's clean. Put half the onion in in one container, half in the other. We're not gonna chop anything yet, we're just gonna prepare that. Alright, so this is my salt. You're you are going to need one tablespoon of salt. This is just half of that wire this is just half right now so you use one tablespoon put half in each container half of one tablespoon in each container sweet basil this is basil so measure and add one tablespoon of dried basil. You can use any of these herbs fresh. Just chop it up fine. So add the herbs half in each container. Next, rosemary. Why I choose to use rosemary in this meal? Rosemary goes well with red meat. This is a kind of reddish meat. 
a red and red red part of the chicken. So grind fine, grind fine a teaspoon of rosemary. If it's fresh, chop it fine. Or you can just put a stem in the stew. Alright, measure and add a quarter teaspoon of dried pimento berries. Put it in container one. Measure and add one tablespoon of parsley, dried parsley. Put half of the one tablespoon in each container. This is jerk seasoning. It's optional, you don't have to use it, but in natural cooking it spruces the flavor. If you don't have access to jerk seasoning, you can use A1, those type of things. Anything that you put on steak, you can use like a, a teaspoon or a quarter teaspoon or half a teaspoon. Put it in container one. So this is like quarter teaspoon. All right, so this is our seasonings. It's container one on top, container two on the bottom. This is red pepper. The red pepper I'm gonna use instead of scotch bonnet pepper. It's a, it's a good substitute. Alright, it's been 10 minutes since we start stewing. It, start, it started to foam over, so you gotta watch it in the beginning and, and kind of leave the lid halfway, kind of slightly open. Alright, so we're gonna add two more cups of water, so get that ready because we have to boil it. 40 minutes, and this is what it looks like. Look how, the, look how the chicken gizzard just look clean in the pot. You saw the water look clean. Anybody can eat from me. Look at that. It's tough. Still tough. Alright, so leave the lid slightly open and allow. Stove's gauge is on four medium lows. You gotta watch it. So keep it slightly open. Remember, you gotta watch it. It's gonna overflow. So, watch it. See which gauge, just which, how far you can keep it open, because you don't want it to overflow every minute and mess the stove up and and um and make some of your stew water come out. And you don't want that. You want it. You want to gauge it properly. So, this two cup of water. I'm just gonna put it to boil because you you have to add hot water to the stew that's boiling when adding additional water. All right, so once it comes to a boil, you don't turn it off. One hour later, all right, you just add, we know it's two cups of water that I use in it, so just add the water to the, the brew, brewing, brewing stew. Remember now, keep the lid slightly open. Stove's gauge is on four, medium low still. One hour, ten minutes. Alright, I know it's tenderized halfway. So now would be a good time to add. See it's still tough, but it's it's you can see the, the fork go through somewhat. So measure and add a teaspoon and a half once I can get this out. This one is thick. They must have heard me complaining saying Jamaicans because this to save money they make it watery. This one is thick look. I have to beat it. I have to cover it back up and beat it down and look it's still still difficult to run out. This is how they used to be in the in the early 90s. It's a long time I haven't seen brown in this thick. 
and it's local. And, and I didn't have it that long either. To say maybe I have it a long time and it got thick. No, I just I don't know how this one is thick. I think I started into making them thick. All right, so this is a teaspoon. Look on your water. See how dark you want it. See, it's kind of it's dark enough, but I just want it to be a little bit darker. So, for one pound chicken gizzard, I would say add a teaspoon and a half of browning. All right. Notice I had the water and let it boil for about an hour or so before I add any seasoning. Because if you add the seasoning early, it's going to cook it out. And most of it will probably evaporate, evaporate in the steam. So an hour and 10 minutes later would be a good time to add the seasoning one. So this, this is a scallion. I'm just dicing the scallion fine and adding it to my brewing stew. Now I'm dicing or slicing the one and a half onion, the onion. This is half. I'm adding the salt and all the herbs. The pimento berries. Remember now, this is seasonings from from container one. Now, I'm grinding the garlic. I keep on calling garlic ginger. The garlic to puree or pulp. And adding it to my stew. That's brewing. Measure and add a teaspoon of soy sauce. I was going to say the soy sauce is optional, but if you can add all of these ingredients that I'm giving you, do so. If you don't have the scallion, it's okay. If you don't have the soy sauce, it's okay. Use a pan's lid, cover it, slightly open, stove gauges on 4 medium low, allow. This is optional as well. This is nutmeg. Grind a pinch and add a pinch of grinded nutmeg. Leave slightly open like this. Stove get on four. Allow. One hour and 30 minutes later, this is what I'm doing. Stove's gauge is on four, medium low. All right, so use a cooking spoon and stir your pot in. You see some of the water is evaporating through the steam. And in the process, tenderizing the chicken gizzard. You see the fart go through a little bit easier. You can see, you saw that. See, it's, it goes through easy. But to be sure, you can always cut off a little piece. That's what I was going to do right now on it's straight, but now it works. I'm going to just allow it. So, but you can cut off a little piece and taste it and taste how tenderized it is. But this is good. We are, we are on the right track. Add a tablespoon of white vinegar. It's kind of make your stew, give your stew a little tanginess. Alright, so cover it. Slightly open. And allow. 
those gauges on four, medium, low, and allow. Sea salt. Remember, I told you I only used half the tablespoon earlier. So I'm now going to add the other half to container seasoning from container two. See, I just taste my stew. Taste it and it and it and it felt like it needed additional salt. Now the aroma is kind of building and rising up. I can smell it. Two hours later, add your time stick. We're gonna start adding seasonings from container two. So do as you see me doing and grind the garlic cloves to puree. Four garlic cloves that's left. Scallion. Dice the scallion. Although you see me cut it like this, I'm not, I'm not touching the blade. Dice or slice the remaining onion. use a chopping board and dice and slice all of these seasonings these vegetables all right add the remaining herbs salt and everything else This is coconut oil. Measure and add a tablespoon of oil. Why do I add the oil? The oil is gonna make the gravy smooth when you when you mixing it. Uh, red pepper. It's a good substitute for Scotch bonnet pepper. It's just as hot. So this is my rice. I'm going to be eating it with rice and the water is drying out. So I got to stir it in and turn the rice down so it can steam and finish cooking. Alright, so back to this. Back to our chicken gizzard brown stew. All right, measure and add a quarter teaspoon of red pepper. Shredded red pepper. Dried shredded red pepper. This is for international people um, who have access to scotch bunny pepper all you need is an is half add the pepper stir your pot in use the pan's lid and cover the pan properly now would be a good time to cover it properly cover it sealed the stove gauge is on four medium low still allow two hours and ten minutes later all right if you have a small tomato you can chop it up fine and add it now would be a good time to add the tomato and you can also add a small carrot just add the carrot like ten minutes near to the end all right so this is our stew a chicken gizzard stew as you see the stew is, is building and the gravy is building most of the water is Take spirit and gone out into the sky and gone in the atmosphere. Most of the water took spirit and gone in the atmosphere. All right, now you see I took a little piece and I put the, the fork. It goes through easily. That's what you want. We are on the right track. This is how 
you want your brown your brown stewed chicken gizzard to look look people just to say why I don't call everything brown stewed because in order to categorize it I have to use the meal's name by its name so if it's chicken gizzard I would say chicken gizzard brown stew if I was to name everything brown stew it, it would be difficult for you to find it all right we're gonna add some ketchup near to the end and it's optional as well and two you can add butter all right so two minutes on the two hours and ten minutes so it's two hours and twelve minutes this is what it looks like all right I'm gonna tell you something now that the stews the gravy build and everything you can see this obviously finish -ish, finish finish -ish. you can turn the stove down and low almost off low and just let the stew just this 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 just kind of build itself some more just keep it on low and let it simmer for 10 minutes and just let it just let it mature all right the 10 minutes the stove skate it's been 10 minutes now since the stove skate is on low almost off low I just allowed it and this is what it looks like now would be a good time to turn the stove up back on four medium low we're gonna finalize this chicken gizzard brown stew now would be a good time to remove the time sticks Measure and add quarter half quarter cup of ketchup. I would say about two tablespoons. This big spoon that I'm using measures quarter cup, so half 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 quarter cup, or two to two between three tablespoons of ketchup. The stew is just right. Look at this gravy. Thick and rich. And look it looks clean. Alright, so use the pan's lid, cover it up properly, sealed. The stove's gauge is on four. Allow. We're gonna finish out now. So it's been two hours, twenty minutes, ten minutes on low. Now five minutes later. This is what it looks like. It's been five minutes now since we turned it up back on four medium low. Let's cover it and two hours, 30 minutes. It's been two hours, 30 minutes, 10 minutes on low, 10 minutes since we turned it back up on four medium low. So we have been cooking an hour, two hours and 30 minutes. Remember now you don't have to use ketchup. But I would say use the ketchup because the ketchup works. It makes the gravy thicker and it kind of creamify the gravy too. Alright, so we want to thicken the gravy. We wanna, once the gravy starts to stick, stick to the pot's bottom, that's a sign to say it's, it's ready. Some people would say you finish right now, but I, I like to get my gravy just right. So once you stir it in and you see it starts to stick to the, to the pan's bottom, that's your sign to say it's finished. Now would be a good time to add the butter. You add a tablespoon of butter, no more than a tablespoon, and just let it creamify. And let it cream the gravy more. I must say I like the color of the of the gizzard. It's a nice light color, a light brown color. So we are near the end of this chicken gizzard brown stew. 
it's a minute between two since you turn the stove up on six medium high just for two minutes just to thicken the gravy and get it just right look how pretty look how pretty that gravy is all right you saw the gravy sticks to the pot's bottom that's that's finished it's ready can't be more readier than this all right so this is this is it all right a tip let the stew sit and set let the stew set or mature for 20 between at least 20 minutes to an hour or three hours four hours before serving and then you warm it up back and then serve the aroma is awesome it's just hitting me in the face right now all right so cover it and finish until you till until serving this is chicken gizzard brown stew visit jamaicadinners.com for the recipe subscribe like share cook this meal yourself give us feedback i know you might be saying it's a simple meal always like cooking gourmet but follow my steps and you will enjoy it i'm trying to let you get a good image a good close-up image of of the meal Alright, just before serving, just take your cooking spoon and stir your pot in. Kind of moist up all your chicken gizzard pieces. And take a scoop of this delicious looking chicken gizzard, the brown stew, and lay it on a bed of rice. Subscribe, like, and share. Chicken gizzards brown stew. Alright, let's taste this meal for you. I can assure you it's delicious if you'll take my word for it. Look how pretty and clean this meal looks. You'll never believe it's just a simple, affordable chicken gizzard. The flavor of it is unique. It's near liver, between liver and kidney, I would say. But it has its own flavor. You see how the meat look red? That's what I call red meat. And you see how it tenderized? It's very tenderized. It's not soft. It's soft enough that I can break it up with my finger. See, look. Make sure this is my witness. I showed you it. I break it up with my finger so it's tenderized. So the cooking time works. The cooking time is very efficient or effective both this meal is delicious with a with a with a spoon of let's put some mayonnaise if you put some mayonnaise on it on the side you will enjoy it it kind of goes well with mayonnaise You are not going to feel upset any at all, meaning when I say upset, I mean it's like you're going to have any tummy, any tummy ache or belly ache. You're not going to have any of that. Your belly is going to feel so at ease, your stomach.
ketchup works with it. I would recommend use the ketchup. The gizzard, if you eat the gizzard, this one is going to make y'all laugh. It's going to make your gizzard stronger. Because <laughs> they say that we, use, we come from the sea. They say whenever you have e-cups, that's when your gizzard is, is kind of trying to work again. Whenever you have hiccups, that's your gill. We have gill. That's your gill trying to, trying, to, trying to be a part of your life again. But it's, it's true though. I'm not making this up. So if you eat the chicken gizzard, it might make your gill that's in dormancy stronger. The browning, the, the teaspoon and a half that I use is sufficient. The pepper works. I could have got away with using half a teaspoon. I only used quarter teaspoon. It's very mildly, mildly spicy. I would say not even spicy. See how clean the meat looks. Yes, the spiciness is just fine. Our children, any child will enjoy this meal. You know some children love good meal. A lot of children like when meal cook, cook good. Some of them will probably eat it if they have no choice, but they love nice stuff. They'll eat big people food, you know, but it has to be delicious. When I was a child, I used to love liver. I used to like eating liver and rice. My mom used to brown stew it. And I used to enjoy eating the liver and kidney too. I used to enjoy eating kidney and liver growing up as a child. Some people probably used to cook the gizzard back then, but it wasn't popular. Probably the poorest of the poorest people used to cook gizzard, chicken gizzard back then. So you, you see that I'm enjoying this meal. The mayonnaise kind of really blends with it nice, I must say. So those of you who like mayonnaise, this would be a good time for you to put some mayonnaise on something. The butter. If you had used the butter, I know it would have spruced the flavor up somewhat and make it even more delicious. But you know I don't use butter. So it's just my choice though. But if you are not against butter or if you don't use butter plenty or if you can find organic butter, you can use a tablespoon. It will kind of make the gravy creamy. Here you go, your request, Miss Kelly. I actually had fun making this video. I can't say why it was fun, but it was. Alright, until next time, see ya. Yeah, man!